Welcome to Rhino CFD Basics. In this video we will run through the Rhino CFD main menu, which can be accessed by clicking on the menu button in the Rhino CFD toolbar. To set up a case correctly, you'll have to go through each of these tabs, ensuring all the settings are correct for your given case. If you need information about any of the buttons on this menu, simply click on the question mark, and then on whichever button you're interested in, and a short description will appear. The first tab to access is the Geometry tab. Clicking on it brings up a panel where you can modify what type of domain you're using, Cartesian or Cylindrical Polar, what type of case you're running, Steady or Transient, as well as modifying your grid settings. Each of these options has its own video describing it in further depth. The second tab is the Models tab. In it, you can choose many of the options relating to the physical and mathematical models you want to use for your simulation. Of particular note are the options for free surface model, useful if you want to simulate the waves produced by water flowing past a boat, for example, and the energy equation, where you can select it if you'd like your simulation to solve for temperature. The Properties tab defines the properties of the fluid you are modeling. By default, this is set to an incompressible air at 20 degrees C. You can modify the particular properties of the fluid by clicking on the Materials button, which lets you modify aspects such as viscosity, density, and several other properties. If you want to solve for temperature in your simulation, you need to change the material to air using the ideal gas law. As can be seen, there is a large list of materials readily available for you to choose from. The reference pressure is set to 1 atmosphere by default, and reference temperature is 273 degrees Kelvin, or 0 degrees Celsius. Thus, when you visualize your results, any pressures and temperatures stated are relative to these values. The Initialization tab is used to specify the initial values before the run. In a steady state case, this can sometimes aid convergence. For example, if you have flow past a boat at 10 meters per second, setting the initial velocity in the flow direction to 10 may help the solver get the result more readily, but is not strictly necessary. In the case of a transient result, the initial conditions set the values in the domain before the simulation runs. Thus, it is important to set these such that they represent the physical problem we're trying to simulate. It is also possible to restart a simulation from a previous run. To do this, click the button saying Activate Restart for All Variables, and in the bottom boxes, select the files you want to restart from. The files in question will end in DA. The Sources tab enables the user to define other aspects of the simulation not covered previously, for example, the activation of gravitational forces. There are several models available for this, though perhaps the most commonly used one is density difference. The Numerics tab is used to control all numerical aspects of the simulation. The most important number is the total number of sweeps the solver will conduct. After this point, the simulation will end, whether it is converged or not. The global convergence criterion establishes the percentage error each of the solved variables needs to drop to for the simulation to terminate. Clicking on relaxation control, we can modify how the numerical iteration process is relaxed. Watch the video on convergence for a more in-depth explanation. Iteration control refers to the number of iterations conducted on each sweep. In general, it is not necessary to alter the default values. Limits on variables can be used to aid convergence, restricting the solver to a certain range of values to choose from for each variable. However, too narrow a range may impede the solver from converging. In general, it is not necessary to edit these values. Finally, differencing schemes allows you to set what type of numerical method is used to solve the equations. Again, this can be left to default values for the ma majority of simulations. The last tab is the Output tab. Here we can control the location of the probe, which is used to output the information about convergence during the run. Field Printout allows us to set what and how often the result file with the simulation performance information is saved. This is done by modifying the value for nprint. The default value of 100 means that this information will be output every 100 sweeps and on the final sweep. Field Dumping, on the other hand, specifies how often you want to save the field values which are the results you visualize later. Outputting these results as the simulation progresses will allow you to visualize them and get an idea of how your simulation is progressing as it converges. The final button is the Derive Variables, which allows you to solve extra parameters that may be of interest, such as skin friction. Thank you for watching this RhinoCFD Basics video. For more information, please visit rhinocfd.com.